The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you, Husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Neil and John Fletcher were brothers who owned the general store and cafe at Brandon Point in equal partnership. Early in the winter of 98, they also acquired a number of claims on the upper reaches of Christmas Creek. It was a speculative buy, and they decided to make a personal trip of inspection before actually going into the mining business. They hired a man called Borneo Smith as their guide and started out for the creek. A month later, Neil and Borneo returned to the point. John would never return. And old Narana, the Indian squaw who cooked for the brothers, was the first to hear of his tragic death. It was on the way back, Narana. You come from that country up there. Mm. Do you remember a cliff about 200 feet high? Mm, that devil cliff. And an old abandoned mine a little way off the trail at the foot of the cliff? Mm. Well, Mr. John wanted to take a look at it, so we stopped there. Mr. John went inside. I warned him against it. The timbers supporting the main shaft were old and shaky. I could see that if a man even bumped against them, they might collapse. There might be a cave-in. You warned him, all right. We saw him coming out. Saw the light of his lantern, anyway. And then it happened. There was a cracking sound, then a roar. The roof of the tunnel caved in. Mr. John was buried alive. Mm. You not try to find him? dig through tons of rock and dirt and snow. It'd take a hundred men a hundred days. That bad thing. Perhaps in the spring we might be... Mr. John, him good man. It's bad him die. Yes, of course you know how I feel about it. Narana, no. While you gone, let her come for Mr. John. A letter? Mm, It's there on the table. I see. Uh, would you get us something to eat, Narana? We're quite hungry. Uh, supper be ready. Plenty soon. Neil, I've been thinking. I didn't shoot your brother, but I helped you blow up the entrance of that mine to conceal the fact that he'd been shot. You'll be paid. Yeah, I know, 5000 But as I say, I've been thinking. That land on Christmas Creek is all yours now. And if it's as rich as I figure, you'll get 100000 out of it. I want more than 5000 I want a quarter interest in the claim. Your job isn't finished, Borneo. This letter complicates matters. Yeah? Let's see, when was it written? Bad news? Two months ago. That means they'll be here any time. Who? John's kids. Jo- He's got kids? Well, I always think of them that way. But they're grown now. Boys 22 and the girls 18. No. Oh, ho, ho. What are you laughing at? Oh, you're not as well off as you thought you were. All of John's property goes to them. You mean to say you forgot? Of course that... I didn't forget. But I never thought they'd be coming up here. I thought I could make any kind of a settlement with them I wanted to. Let's see. The mail sleds are due tomorrow, aren't they? Yeah. I'm willing to bet they'll arrive then. Well? And you talk about a quarter interest. I'm glad you heard me. I heard you. And I'll give you a quarter interest on one condition. What's that? That you help me get rid of them. Oh, now, wait a minute. Take it or leave it. What are you planning to do? I don't know yet. I'll decide by tomorrow morning. Why not just send them back to the States? That won't do any good if they find out about the claims. Why tell them? There are plenty of people around here who know that John and I bought the land together. If Gil and Louise find out and try to claim their share... Well, something will have to be done. Shall I count on you? For a quarter interest? Yeah. Good. It's settled. 
Neil was correct in his guess about the time of Gil and Louise Fletcher's arrival. They reached Brandon Point the next day with the mail sleds. Their uncle met them. Hello, Gil. Hello. What a strapping fellow you turned out to be. Hi, Uncle Neil. Oh, where's Dad? And Louise. You're a beauty, my dear. Isn't Dad in town? Well, I have some, some bad news. What? I'd rather wait till we get home to tell you. Something's happened to him. Later, later, my dear. When Gil and Louise heard the news of their father's <laughs> death. No, I... I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Louise. Yes. Oh, Gil, we, we've come so far just to be with him, and now... And I know. You should I never know. have come up here. If you'd waited for your father's permission, he'd never have given That's it. That's why we didn't wait. It's been five years since we saw him. Well, the mail sled will be starting back for Dawson and Whitehorse tomorrow. I want you to travel with them. No. The Yukon is no place for a girl like you, Louise. Oh, please. Granddad a year ago, and, and with Dad gone, you're the only family we have. Please let us stay here with you. Gil, you look as if you had good judgment, and you've seen enough of the Yukon to know. Is this any place for your sister? Well, well she likes it, sir. I love it. And look at this house. I could do a lot for you. I could make you a real home. Hey, Uncle Neil, I was talking to a man in Skagway. He said that he'd sold Dad and you some mining land on Christmas Creek. Is, is that the right name? There is a Christmas Creek north of here. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't know you had company near. Uh, that's all right, Borneo. Come on in. All right. Take a chair. Uh, thanks. Well, this is my niece and nephew, Louise and Gil. Howdy. I'm Borneo Smith. Oh, then, then you were the guide who was with Dad when... Yeah. Yeah, me and your uncle. Sad thing. Where was it you were coming from when it happened? Why... Well, we've been inspecting those claims you spoke of, Gil. Huh? Gil heard about them in Skagway, Borneo. Oh. Evidently, as soon as he got off the boat. Um, what were you going to say about them, boy? Oh, well, um, if you didn't want us here, I, I've been thinking. I suppose Dad's share in the land belongs to us now, and... Well, I've had a lot of experience mining gold. Was well, that so? Yes, sir, um down in California. Worked at it over a year. I was thinking that Louise and I could go up to Christmas Creek and I could work the claims. The store and the cafe, you couldn't very well do it. and well, We'd have to hire somebody, wouldn't we? Hmm. What do you think of that, Borneo? Well, it's all right for the boy, but I think you should keep the girl here. She's too pretty to be wasted on Christmas Creek. Yeah? What's your idea, Neil? That we take them both up to the creek and let them decide if they want to stay or not. Ah, the boy's enough. Let him decide. It's a hard trip, Gil. There's no point in making your sister take it until you're sure you know what you want to do. Maybe you're right, Ponyo. Oh, but I don't want to stay here all alone. Of course not. Moran will take care of her. We'll talk about it later. Look, there's no need of that. I'm going to be your guide. I don't want the girl along. Oh, really? Well, I don't want anything to happen to you, Louise. It's a dangerous trip. Then perhaps Gil shouldn't go. Oh, it's dangerous for a girl, I mean. Gil's husky enough to stand it. <clears throat> you two must be hungry. Why don't you go out in the kitchen? Nerana will get you something to eat. No, really, I'm not. Ah, hungry. your uncle knows best. And besides, I have some business to talk over with Borneo. Please. Oh, of course. <laughs> All right, Uncle Neil. I don't think I want you. Now, now, look. Now, oh, what's the idea of refusing to take the girl? <laughs> it's about time I got married. So that's it. You want a half interest instead of a quarter. You're good at figures. <laughs> so am I. Oh, a double cross. Look, I'm taking my chances. I have to persuade her to marry me. And that's the way I want to play the game, Neil. Mm. What about the boy? There's no sense in letting him cut in. When do we start for Christmas Creek? The sooner the better. I'll have supplies and dog teams ready tomorrow. Is that okay? Why not? All right. Come on. We'll tell the boy it's all settled. Borneo made all the necessary arrangements. The three men hit the trail the following morning. What? What's on? Louise had smiled as she said goodbye to Gil. But long after he had gone, she sat at the window. About noon, a dog team raced into town from the direction of the Indian village to the south. One man was riding the sled, another ran behind him. <laughs> Narana, come here. Uh, what you want? There's a dog team heading this way. Come and look at the lead. 
Oh, I've never seen such a beauty. Uh, oh, that king. King? Who are the two men? Big one, him Sergeant Preston. Other one, Constable Downey. Why, they're stopping out in front. Uh, Narina found out them at Indian Village. Send for them. You did? Why, they're Northwest Mounted Policemen, aren't they? That's right. Narana have bad dream. Tell Sergeant. What are you talking about? Narana, let Sergeant in. All right, King. Come on, boy. Hello, Narana. Hello. Got him, Narana. Sweeping bowl brought you a message. What's wrong? This Mr. John's girl. Oh, yes. I heard you'd arrive, Miss Fletcher. I'm Sergeant Preston. This is Constable Downey. Hello. How do you do? Your father was a friend of mine. You have my deepest sympathy. Thank you. Isn't your brother here? Him go to Christmas Creek with Mr. Neal, Borneo Smith. That's so? They started this morning. Gil, my brother, may stay up there and work the claim. You go after them now, Sergeant. After them? You go. Why? Why should the sergeant go after them? Marana have bad dreams. Great shaman come to her in sleep. Tell her, too. Great shaman told you what? Mr. Neal kill Mr. John. Nirana! Mr. Neal make Mr. John walk into mine. Then him shoot. But there was a cave in. That's the way I heard it. No. Mr. Neal, Borneo, use blasting powder. Close up tunnel. You're sure you dreamed this, Nirana? Mm. She comes from Christmas Creek, Sergeant. It could be the great shaman she's talking about, a member of her tribe. Your Honor, dream. Uncle Neil couldn't do a thing like that. Not to my father. Not to his own brother. Mm, you go, Sergeant. Boy, never come back. You not hurry. Oh, don't say things like that, Your Honor. Well, Sergeant, you, you don't believe her, do you? There can't be anything in a dream. Miss Fletcher, most of the Indians in this district respect the law, but they're afraid of it. They don't like to get involved in any way. Your Honor says she had a bad dream. Might be that some member of her tribe saw what happened, came here and told her. Is that true, Nirana? Nirana, dream more. Soon Mr. Gill, Mr. Neal fight on cliff. Soon Mr. Gill meet his father. No! That's enough for me. She knows something. <laughs> How much start do they have? Four hours. They could make the top of Devil's Cliff by tonight. Uh -huh. Four hours start. King, we'll have to make fast time if we aren't going to be too late. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Jim. Right with you. The early dusk of the Northland had closed in before Borneo, Neil, and Gill reached the bottom of the trail that led to the top of Devil's Cliff. A light snow was falling as well, but they continued on up to the summit. By that time, night had fallen, and they prepared to make camp. Gill, now we go to work. We find that this is a lot different from traveling with mail sleds. No, we spent a few nights in the open. I know the routine. Every man does his share when it comes to making camp. That suits me. All right, then how about cutting down some of those small firs for the campfire? Over there, the, by the edge of the cliff? Yep. Oh, hey, uh, uh, is the mine where Dad, uh, at the bottom of this cliff? No, Gil, that's farther on. We'll reach it tomorrow. Oh. Here, here's an axe. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and after you cut down the saplings, strip off the boughs, we'll use them to sleep on. All right. The mine must be directly below here. Yeah, about... Hand me the bag with the fish. I'll feed the dogs. I'll do that. You got another job. No, I haven't. That job belongs to you. You want to marry his sister? He'd never stand for it. Maybe he would. You think it over. I'll feed the dogs. Here, Joey. Joey, I said get back there. Don't you wait your turn now. Here, Malu. Rusty. Now, Vixen. Here, Jeb. That's it. Well, have you decided? I'll take care of him. With your gun? Just the barrel. I won't make the same mistake you did. Shut up. Ah, no bullets for me. We can pick them up at the bottom and take them home. There won't be any bullet holes. You're wasting time. Look, he isn't close enough to the edge. He won't get any closer. Oh, yes, he will. Hey, Gil. Uh, yeah? That one's too big. Come over here. Why? I figured I might lose my footing. I mean, this axe is heavy, Borny, on a... And when I swing it, it might carry me over. Well, you don't have to swing it so hard, not on a sapling like this. Oh, I'll try. Now, just a second while I get around and bag you. I never trust the head of an axe. Uh, all set? Go to it. That's a way. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I was... Hey, hey, what's the matter? Nothing, mister. Oh, 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 oh. 
Good work, Borneo. Ah, uh, you're wrong. What's the matter? Look over the edge. I you... only dropped about 30 feet. That ledge caught him. We must be dead, though. No, I don't think so. Then you can put a bullet through him. What, and leave him lying there for the next traveler to find? You've got a lot of brains. What do we do? Hey, listen. That's a dog to you. Where? Down the valley. And look, a lantern, do you see? And two men. They stopped just below here. The entrance to the mine. They're looking at it. Yeah. Borio. I recognize one of those men. The light caught him full in the face for a second there. Who? Sergeant Preston. Ah, you can't be sure. I am. Get back from the edge so he can't see us. What, way up here without any light? The sergeant will be coming up here. What are we going to do? Leave Gil where he is? I don't know. Let me think. Shut up, you mutts. Yeah, we'll harness the team. Yeah, then what? It's snowing harder every minute. What of it? Everything's okay. I don't see it. Look, the cold will get Gil in less than an hour. And what's more, the snow will cover him up. Even if the sergeant comes by this way, you won't find him. And there won't be any sled tracks for him to follow. Follow where? Where are we going? West. We'll take the long trail back to Brandon Point. There'll be a lot of questions asked when we get there. Come on, Joey, on your feet. What do we say? Line up the team. But what do we say? We'll tell the truth. The boy fell off the cliff and landed on a ledge where we couldn't reach him. With a rope? We had no rope. Now, come on. Let's get out of here. Climb aboard. Right. I'm all set. Bus, Joey. Bus off! <laughs> Half an hour later, the sergeant and Constable Downey reached the top of the cliff. By that time, Borneo's prophecy had come true. They fought their way through a heavy snowstorm. King was working as a loose leaf. On King! On, you husky! What's I know? I'm sure I heard dogs up here. King knows his job. He must still be on their trail or he'd have stopped. Sure enough. He's heading for the edge of the cliff. Oh, you husky! One hour. We'll follow him. Look at this tree, Jim. Someone chopped it down. Not very long ago, either. The cut isn't weathered at all. There's another one closer to the edge. And left lying. Oh, 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 oh. King's looking down into the valley. What is it, boy? I can't see anything. I do. Down on that ledge. It's a man. It, yes, yes, it could be. It is. Dead? We'll have to find out. A rope was tied around one of the larger trees close to the edge of the cliff and dropped down to the ledge. The sergeant went down the rope slowly. The wind tore at his hands. Any false move meant instant death. But at last he reached the temporary safety of the narrow ledge. A swift examination, and he knew that Gill was still alive. Must be the boy. He isn't dead yet. Good. The sergeant tied the end of the rope under Gill's arms and tested his knot. Then he went up the rope hand over hand. And with Constable Downey's help, they raised the unconscious boy up to the top. Blankets and brandy, Jim, and a fire. We'll have to work fast if we're going to save him. Right, Sergeant. It was at practically that same moment that Louise, staring into the fire in the living room of the Fletcher home, was startled by the door opening behind Wait. her. Oh, Nirana. Uh, it's time for you to go to see Father. What? What are you talking about? You come with me. You go see Father. He's dead. No. Me take you to see him now. But I don't understand. Where? It's not far away. Indian village. His body. Is that what you're trying to say? They've recovered his body? Oh, but they couldn't have Nirana. You heard Uncle Neil. You were told just as I was. He was buried in the mine and nothing can be done about it until spring. Your father lives. You don't mean that. Mm -hmm. Indian medicine man try to help him. But him need help of white doctor. You go to doctor, tell him. You, me, doctor, go out to Indian village. Oh, Dad is alive. Mm, you come with me. Oh, yes, Nirana, yes, of course I will. You, you're not fooling me, are you? You're telling me the truth. Mm, Nirana, tell you truth. Oh, as soon as I get my coat. Oh, Nirana, Dad alive, I can hardly believe it. <laughs> Five minutes later, Louise was knocking on the door of Dr. Moran's house. Oh, please, please, doctor. My dear young lady, what's the matter? Oh, you've heard the story of my father about the cave in the mine. I, I really don't know. I, oh, dear. Please, please control yourself. Well, Narana here, she says he's still alive out at the Indian village. She wants you to go out there with us right now. Oh, will you please? Narana. Mr. John, him shot, doctor. There, bullet and chest. You bring sharp knife. Take bullet out. I don't understand any more about it than you do, Doctor, but... Oh, 
see him, if he is alive, if, if there's any chance of saving his life. I'll be right with you. The Indian village was only two miles outside of Brandon Point. An hour later, the doctor had completed his operation and was able to reassure Louise. He'll live, Louise. He'll live. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. His condition is critical, very critical. Can't be moved under any circumstances. Not for at least a week. But how did he ever get here from the mine at the foot of Devil's Cliff? I'm just as interested as you are, and I intend to find out. Narana, come here. Mm. What you want? Mr. John is going to live. Oh, that good. But I'm not going to stand for any nonsense. None of this rigmarole about dreams you've been telling Miss Louise. I want the truth. Since Neil Fletcher and Borneo took the long trail back to town from Devil's Cliff, it was nearly morning before they reached Brandon Point. Louise met them at the door of the Fletcher home. Why have you come back? Tell Narada to get us some breakfast. Why have you come back? We had an accident. Where's Gil, Uncle Neil? Now, don't get hysterical. You killed him! Narada! What put such an idea into your head? Borneo told you there was an accident. Sit down, kid. I'll tell you all about it. You don't have to. I know. You killed him! Narada! Why are you calling her? You not move, Mr. Neil. Narana, shoot. Why are you? What's the idea of the gun? Mr. John, come home. What? Narana's people bring him home. Yes, and I saw him. He'd been shot. Borneo. Keep quiet. Sergeant, arrest you and him come. Oh, so that's it. Hmm? You thought no one would ever know, but Narana's people told her what had happened. Narana, dream. You're still dreaming. She's only saying that. They told her and she sent a message to Sergeant Preston. He followed you to save Gil, but... Oh, oh Narana, he was too late. <laughs> Bad men pay now. Them hang. Oh, you're all wrong, Narana. Your people didn't tell you the truth. They did. I saw Dad myself. But he's buried under tons of rock. No. There are other entrance to mine. Indians go in. Find Mr. John back in tunnel. Yeah? Where is he now? Me tell Sergeant Preston. Not tell you. Now, look, Narana, let's talk this over. You not move. Oh, look out, Narana. He has a gun. Yeah. Oh, oh Narana. <laughs> I'll keep these two covered. Is she dead? No. You go to the store in the cafe, get all the gold dust you can. What for? The game's up. We're getting out of here. I can't leave Brandon Point. All my property's here. And only save what you can take with you. It's only about 50 miles to the border through Crystal Pass. Once we're across it, we'll be safe. What, my store and the claim on Christmas Listen, Creek? Gold dust is all that matters now. Get going. No, I, I won't let you get away. She has Narana's gun. Give me that. <laughs> Yeah, that takes care of both of them. Now I can go with you. I don't like it. Well, who does? Isn't there some way Look, we... you got your choice. Either hang or hurry. Now, come on. It was half an hour before Louise recovered consciousness. Her first thought was of Narana, and she cared for her to the best of her ability. And then suddenly she heard a dog team outside. Oh, they come back. Where's that gun? Louise, sis, are you all right? Oh, Gil. Gil. Steady, steady. I thought you were dead. Oh, I would be if it hadn't been for Sergeant Preston. What happened to your mom? Oh, Borneo shot her before he left with Uncle Neil. They've gone then? Yes. I can tell you everything now, Sergeant. Oh, Gil, the good news is that Dad is still alive. What? It's true. Last night, Narana took me and the doctor out to the Indian village, and, and Dad was there. But, Miss Fletcher, we saw the entrance to the mine, and it was... I know, but there's another entrance. And after Uncle Neil and Borneo left, the Indians went into the mine and... Well, they found Dad. Alive? He'd managed to crawl far enough back in the main tunnel to escape the blast. The Indians recognized him and knew that Narana worked for him. They sent a message to her. That explains her dream. Yes. And there are men in the Indian village who saw Uncle Neil shoot Dad. Is your father conscious? Not yet, but the doctor says he'll pull through. Who are the Indians who saw the shooting? Well, Narana can give you their names. How is she? Her pulse seems to be steady. Well, she's weak, of course. You know where your uncle and Borneo have gone? They're trying to cross the border through Crystal Pass. Jim? Yes, sir. Take charge of things here. I'll go after uh, them. If you catch them, it'll be two against one. I'll travel faster oh. alone. Uh, Narana's trying to say something. What is it, Narana? Oh, you go get them, Sergeant. Oh. I'll do my best. Come on, King. Oh, 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 oh. Toward nightfall of the same day, two desperate men were racing for the opening of Crystal Pass. They could see the sergeant less than half a mile behind them. And Borneo whipped his team into a new burst of speed. Mush! Faster! Mush! They can't keep it up. They'll have to till we get through the pass and we'll be over the border. Mush! The sergeant's in range now. Duck low on the running board, now shoot over here. All right, go ahead. Shoot his lead. Right. 
I hit him. Ah, you fool, you hit nothing. That isn't his lead, Yelvin. It's our lead, Joe. He's gone lame. Now, we'll have to take cover behind those rocks over there and shoot it out. Oh, you mutt! Oh! Oh! All right, come on, move. I don't want to die. Come on and fast, you yellow rat. If you want to live, shoot to kill. Here. All right, take cover. Yeah. Well, start shooting. I'll have to show myself to aim. And he's the best shot in the Yukon. He'll get us both. Yeah, you rat. I'm going to surrender and take a chance on a trial. You'll hang. He's coming straight on. Yeah, and I'll stop him. i got to beat on him now. No! Oh! Borneo, I told you, the best shot... In the... Don't, don't shoot anymore, Sergeant. I give up. I surrender. Okay. Sergeant, I want to make a full confession. None of it was my fault. He forced me to help him. He may have something to say about that when he recovers. He's dead. I only winged him. He lit his head on that rock. He'll be well enough to wear handcuffs as soon as I put a bandage on that shoulder. Sergeant, I swear... Never mind the talk. You're both under arrest in the name of the Crown. I warn you, anything you say may be used against you. I swear I... The charge is attempted murder. Attempted? Yes, you weren't as successful as Cain. You didn't succeed in killing your brother. Oh. Come over here. I'm going to handcuff you to the G-pole of your sled. I won't try to get away. I'll make sure of that. One hand will be enough. There. I'll take care of Borneo and get him on the sled. You'll drive ahead of me back to Brandon Point. From there, it's Dawson, jail, and the end of the trail for you and Borneo. This case is closed. Oh, oh, oh. In our next adventure, Sergeant Preston is discussing an express office robbery in Selkirk with the constable. The express agent swears his assistant, Bert Congers, knocked him off and robbed the safe. I know Congers. It's hard to believe he's guilty, constable. The agent was knocked out, the safe robbed, and Congers is missing. The facts are all against Bert Congers. Well, we'll trail him and bring him back. But if Congers is guilty, I'll never trust my judgment of human nature again. Let's go, King. <laughs> When Sergeant Preston and the constable, with King's help, finally pick up the crook's trail, the result may be very surprising. And when they meet the crooks for a showdown, they may find themselves in a death trap. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The Challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness. Clyde Beatty defies the beasts of the jungle. And Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice. Sky King zooming to supersonic action. And Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.